About 200 years ago, the world changed fundamentally when the Industrial Revolution ignited a, a set of technological and economic changes that vastly increased living standards. The American middle class was built on the back of routine work. You can think about routine physical work, that's an assembly line worker in a factory, or routine cognitive work, that's the payroll clerk in that same factory. Both of those jobs are going away very quickly. There is growing unease about what the future looks like. People feel that technology is starting to run away with itself and you know, humans are, are being left behind. One of the challenges we're facing today is that about half the population in the United States and other developed countries has not shared in this bounty that the second machine age is bringing. We can decide what the future of work looks like. Big technology changes always force us to think hard and to do some things differently. This is one of those times. Technology has always been destroying jobs, but it's also always been creating jobs. It's not what technology does to us, it's what we do with technology. We are not anywhere near peak jobs or peak labor. So this notion that the that technology, that the robots are already eating away at all the jobs in America, it's just wrong. Technology is not destiny. We shape our destiny. With the Inclusive Innovation Challenge, we are seeking to identify, recognize, and reward the innovators that are using technology for inclusion, for shared prosperity. So what we're trying to encourage and celebrate is the next wave of job creating, wage increasing, innovation and entrepreneurship that, that uses technology. My name is Brenna Schneider. I'm the founder and CEO of 99 Degrees in Lawrence, Massachusetts. We're an apparel manufacturing company and our vision is to build a future factory. And that future factory integrates the best of um, what humans can do with the best of machinery and automation. That technology allows us to reduce the number of labor minutes in each product we produce and therefore the cost of producing that product. We want to create over time a community of these kinds of inclusive innovators. And so we get some momentum around this idea that technology also provides opportunities for people. One of the most fundamental things we can do is reinvent education. Think creatively, ask the right questions, have interpersonal skills, work in teams. Those are skills that machines can't do. In the second machine age, the desire to build and create things will become ever more valuable. We can leverage it with technology, and this could be the best thing that happened to most people. One of the things we're trying to do with the Inclusive Innovation Challenge is, is rejigger things a bit so we go attack the problems today that need attacking and give people more economic opportunity as they're helping address those challenges. The Inclusive Innovation Challenge is essentially the solutions arm of the Initiative on the Digital Economy. The Initiative on the Digital Economy is very focused on research, convening ecosystem stakeholders. The Inclusive Innovation Challenge is starting to say, what are the solutions that are out there today that are actually addressing those challenges? If you're an entrepreneur that's building and is motivated by both impact and scale, then this is the kind of challenge that can surround you with resources, build your network, um, and strengthen the foundation on which we're all growing together to, to make change in our own communities, in our countries, and across the world. Let's not do things that are jumping way ahead of the current situation. So let's keep trying to get the educational system right. Let's keep trying to accelerate innovation and entrepreneurship. The IIC is a global tournament. We collaborate with partners in five regions, North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, and Asia to select 20 regional finalists who advance to the Global Grand Prize Celebration at MIT, where we award over $1 million. We are now on the ground expanding our impact on the future of work and the entrepreneurs who are reinventing it, accelerating the inclusive innovation movement. This is not something that's predetermined by technology or by policy or by economic forces. It's something that we as entrepreneurs and as individuals can decide. We're looking for organizations that have solutions which are working today and they're benefiting working people right now 
They're beyond the idea phase and are in the implementation phase and are already succeeding. The next decade could be the best decade in human history if we harness technology for the many, not just the few.